Which one are you on one page? Sorry. And we are honored to have Cindy Sarko with us, Director of Public Relations, and Susie Chili, Director of Design and Engineering. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. You are so very welcome. Good morning. Good morning. It's foggy outside. It was foggy in Williamsburg when we left. Thank you, number one, for having us. We appreciate always being invited to these events. We love all of you. You guys started at our park a long time ago. Um, but thank you for having us. We appreciate all of you. You're part of our family. And especially this lady right over here who's on her phone. <laughs> we love you very, very much. So thanks for having us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. First of all, let me introduce myself. If you don't know who I am or haven't met or haven't had the privilege of meeting all of you, um, Cindy Sarko. I've been at the park for 30 years. I started when I was two. This is before the labor laws went into it. <laughs> so I started when I was two. Um, but 30 years, I've been there in marketing most of the time, uh, or all the time. What am I talking about? I will tell you this. Let me start with a quick story. When I graduated from college, five years ago, um, I, I studied radio and television, and I wanted to go in directing and all that, all that stuff. Couldn't find a job, so Bush Gardens was hiring. This was in 19, I gotta get my date right, because I never forget, I never can remember when I graduated. Must have been 19, <laughs> graduated from college, so 83, 84, okay? I'll just be honest with you guys. <laughs> so, I couldn't find a job in what I had studied for, I was on the five-year plan. I'm, I'm revealing all my secrets right now. On the five-year plan, and Bush Gardens was hiring, and this is when we had, like, seasons of, uh, I think it was the red cast and the green cast and the gold cast. Whatever it was, I was part of the gold cast and I was hired for um, the follow spot operator, sorry, a, spot, a spotlight, in what was then the Magic Lantern Theater mm -hmm. in Hastings. Yep. Wow. And so I sat in the back where that booth is now currently in the uh, Abbey Stone Theater ran the spotlight for uh, Hats Off to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. you remember, anybody? And I think it was just Hats Off to Hollywood. Then, you know, the season closed when we closed in, when did we close, in October? Or did we close it after Labor Day? And it was over, and then I had no job left. <laughs> but I started my career at Bush Gardens, and then went on to work at a couple of television stations, and then came <coughs> back, and I've been at Bush Gardens ever since, which has been awesome. So, and so I, I probably have seen you most of the time over the years, but um, again, 30 years, 30 long years. It's been a really great ride, literally. <laughs> so this is where audience participation, you don't have to get up, you don't have to do anything, but all I need to know if you attended or you're a part of, I just need a boop boop or a yeah or a boo, whatever you want to do. So here we go. 2018. Who was part of the 40th anniversary celebration? I remember you. Yes, I do. Uh, 40th anniversary, so we'll just take a little bit, uh, walk down memory lane. It was just whatever, how many days ago? Five days ago, 2018. And you're, you're going to be able to bid on a 40th anniversary sign back there that was uh, from the park that was in the um, big, big bin um, clock tower. So that's going to be available for you to bid on. Uh, just need a whoop whoop if you attended. Food and wine. You were at the food and wine festival? You were just at the food, not the wine, right? Okay. Light balance. Thank you. Please bring them back. We're trying, baby, because if I have anything to do with it, I mean, I, I think I went to every show. I think they thought I was a stalker. <laughs> I, I'm sorry you can't see the picture really well, but they're part of Summer Nights and Spark and all of that, so we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. I heard it was fantastic. It was phenomenal. Um, beer Fest? No. No. <laughs> Why are you sad? <laughs> all right. How to scream? Woo! Every Friday night. 
and the last day today, Christmas Town. Yeah, so that was 2018. So Hallow Screen, we celebrated what? 20 years, which I can't believe. Seems like just yesterday, we. Do you want? I want to give you some trivia. Guess who named Hallow Screen? Guess. Carl. You're looking at her. Yay. I named Hallow Screen. When they said they came in, they said, "Oh my God, we need a name for a new Halloween event. We need our." <laughs> it took me a long time to do it, but I came up with it. Anyway, and then Christmas Town celebrated 10 years this year, which I still can't believe. 10 million, um, 10 million lights. 10 million plus lights, really. We, we just ran out of our calculator space to count. <laughs> it was a lot. So, moving on to 2019. This is just for you guys to mark your calendars and think about. More details will be coming forth, you know, once we get closer into park opening. But just to let you know what's coming up and coming down this way for event-wise. Kids Weekends, Paula's Chariot turns 20 this year. 20. What did you just say? I said bring back Bobby. Can we get security? Can we get the security? Can we get security to lead him out? What did you say? Yes. I was there for that too. Uh, moving on quickly. Uh, food and wine festival, summer nights, beer fest, Howl Scream, and Christmas Town. So you know, all of all your favorites, all our favorites are coming back. But just to mark your calendars and then keep, we'll keep you posted on everything else. Um, so here's the real star of the show. Real star of the show. Um, Susie has Ch Susie Cheely, who is. That works in design and engineering. Um, works closely with Larry Giles. I know you all probably are familiar with Larry Giles. Um, but Susie is now, she's the deal. Um, been with the park 27 years. She started when what, five, when you were five? Four. Or four. You were four. I usually say 12. But no. since you're saying. A two. I started at two. Okay, so Susie started at five. Um, she's been very, very. Um, uh, she's been in charge of building really a lot of iconic attractions at the park. Four of them here, both at Water Country and at Bush Gardens, Colossal Coral Invader, Battle for Iron, Vantage Point, along with a hundred million other projects um, like restaurants and restrooms and things like that that you might not notice, but she's had a big hand in. Um, she is an awesome person. She's a talented person. I am honored and this is the honest to goodness truth to be work with her on a daily basis um, our paths cross all the time she said oh my god here comes Cindy again what does she need to know um, but she really is she's a really talented awesome she's got so much experience and I'm proud to know her so I would like to turn it over to Susie Cheely now we're gonna show a quick video she's gonna run through um, all of our new the new attractions that we have coming up this year Finnegan's Flyer and cut back water coaster at Water Country. So if I can figure out how to run this video, Elizabeth Ringus. Stand by. <laughs> If not, it's okay. You you might have seen, I'm sure most of you have seen the video to when we announced the new attractions. Um, and if you need to go online and look at it. <laughs> yeah, just play that.
So that's what you have to look forward to in 2019. So I'm going to turn it over to Susie. She'll walk us through what we've got. Hey everybody, um, I have actually, uh, February 1st will be my 28th anniversary at Bush Gardens, so it'll be 28 years now, so it's been 27 for a while, and uh, since Cindy said that she named Hallow Scream, I'm going to tell you I named Finnegan's Flyer. Yeah. Pretty good for an engineer, right? We don't usually get to name things, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, so we started construction uh, this summer, actually. We, uh, you, if you've been there during Howl Scream, you saw the fence go up on the Killarney Bridge, and everything's going on behind there. Um, when we decided on the location, I was kind of surprised because there's really no room there, but <laughs> we're putting in piles and uh, all kinds of bizarre foundations to support this thing. So the neat thing is, even though it's an 80 foot swing, you're, you uh, fly up to 80 feet, you're actually going to be probably about 130 feet above the grade because it's already way above the, the stream behind it. Um, so here's the construction as of, this is very recent actually last week, this is one of the supports for the one leg of the swing, basically you got two big uh, supports for the swing. And um, there's so much steel in there, I can't even tell you, it's amazing. It, when we were looking at the foundations, there's so many rebar that you're wondering if the concrete can fit in between. It's, it's just insane. But it's gotta support this uh, huge, huge ride with all the dynamics involved as well. Um, here's another angle. Um, you can see some of the uh, foundation walls already in. And down at the bottom, there was a beautiful stream below the bridge. Uh, we had to build a crane pad there. And that in itself, we had to take out a lot of the, the mud from underneath there, put in a lot of concrete, rebar, things like that to support the crane that's got to support the uh, construction, and then finally erect the ride. So it's, uh, it's been a pretty interesting project. They're all different. Every project's different, but uh, it all has its uh, interesting facets. Um, there's just another angle. I guess those are the guys at the top probably putting, setting the anchor bolts before they put the uh, concrete in. But you can see that the relation of the other attractions that you were able to see while you're on. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, train trestle. If you ride the train around, you can see the train trestle. Um, uh, uh, Alpengeist is behind there and Mock Tower. So, and actually, you'll be able to see Loch Ness as well. So, it's uh, pretty much you can see the whole park from the top. It's going to be really neat because the swings themselves will run. Um, oh, actually, it's Griffin, isn't it? I think you can see Griffin and Alpengeist from the, from the ride. Um, the swing itself is going to swing probably about parallel to the bridge. So when you're walking across the bridge from the Clyde Barn, the swing's gonna kinda go up that way. And again, you know, you're gonna have people on both sides of the swing. There's uh, 16 seats, eight on each side of both arms. So the people on the back side, they're gonna be looking down at what was the stream. And it'll be a stream again once it's all said and done. But it's gonna be pretty exciting. I think you said you, you've ridden one of these rides, right? Okay, so on to water country. Um, we've always wanted to put in a water coaster at water country. Um, and every, every year we talk about it and there's a lot of, a lot of people making these decisions. Um, so we finally, finally got the opportunity to do a water coaster. ProSlide has several different kinds. They have one that's with uh, magnets in the bottom of the slide and then the bottom of the raft. This one's actually propulsion. We're going to use the uh, tower from Meltdown and the conveyor, um, change the rafts. The rafts are going to be a four-person inline raft, which is kind of similar to uh, what was used at Meltdown. But the difference is on the sides, both sides of the rafts, there are these pockets. 
not holding this close to my mouth as well as I should, but the, um, the, the water, there's gonna be nozzles in the sides of the slide that pr um, push water out, and the water's gonna go into this, the pockets of the raft to, to uh, launch it forward. We have three launch sections, and then there's uh, five saucer areas. Um, where the water goes in to launch the uh, rafts upward, when they go down, the water has to evacuate out. So there's all these areas where you're putting water in and then taking water out. So there's a lot more science to it than just a regular water slide <coughs> where you start at the top, slide down to the bottom. So it's definitely a little uh, more complicated, but this is some of the areas where they evacuate the water. Um, this is one of the launch areas um, <laughs> on a snow day, yes, we've already had snow at Bush Gardens, which it really makes construction interesting. I'm sure Clint can probably relate to that. Um, so uh, the, the pro slide guys call this the bus, like the, you know, because <laughs> it looks like it with the windows in the side, but I rode one of these down at Fiesta, Texas, and it was a lot of fun, but basically this is where the, the raft launches forward before it goes down again. So it's kind of neat. You'd be able to kind of look out and the light comes in, which is kind of neat. These are some of the nozzles that um, the water comes in through these pipes and then is uh, funneled through these nozzles to propel the, the raft upwards. These are great pictures, by the way, Cindy. <laughs> you guys did a great job. So Pro Slide's already working out in our parking lot. A lot of the, most of the pieces have already come in and they're pre-assembling a lot of the pieces before they start erection. They're planning on starting um, install the middle of February. So, but there's a lot of pre-work that goes on in the parking lot beforehand. Um, this is another uh, area, this, these are the saucer areas. So um, once you're launched forward, you kind of go around these areas. There's five, five of these on the way down. Another picture of the bus, <laughs> the launch area. Yeah, so the ride is gonna be about 900 linear feet, a little bit less, I think, and um, it goes about 35 feet per second. So um, it's pretty fast, you know, on the down areas and just, just a different experience than what we've had at Water Country. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. I think the guests will uh, really appreciate it. And that's it. So. So that's why we wanted to show that. Um, questions, thoughts? Oh Lord. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, fit against flyer. Yeah. Is it going to be the the loading area is going to be pretty much level with the bridge? It will be. Okay. Yes, the loading area will be uh, level with the bridge and the deck, everything. We're very close to that. So that's where you'll actually. Are you familiar with Ireland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right across from the toy shop, that'll be where the entrance okay. uh, the entrance key is going to be. Okay. How, how did you come up with the name Finnegan? And is that a character in the in a story here? Um, it was actually a group effort. I, I took credit for it, but it was actually a group, group effort. We we were sitting around, kind of coming up with kind of Irish names and things like that. And yeah, exactly, because you're you're in Ireland. Pardon me. Oh yes, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Maybe at Water Country, right? Um, but yeah, we just it was just kind of. You know, everybody was throwing out names, and I said, "What about Finnegan's Flyer?" And everybody's like, oh, that's good. Yeah. "Yeah." So you can tell us what were other locations you were considered for? 
Um, I think they were looking over in Italy. They were looking at a location in Italy. Uh, but I think because right now Ireland just has the Battle for Ire. So we thought it would be really neat to have another ride in that area. Do you have any bands scheduled for next year yet? Haven't scheduled haven't scheduled bands yet. We might be adding more events to summer night. So haven't nothing set in stone yet. We haven't signed contracts or anything, but that should be coming out sooner rather than later. <laughs> Are there tentative opening dates for both Fittigan's Clara and Cadillac Insight? We're saying for both attractions opening spring because you know the weather if we if weather doesn't start cooperating, you know, but opening spring, we haven't had a definite date. It'll be earlier spring though. But stay tuned, probably March we'll be able to know more. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I was lucky enough to attend Coaster Con in ninety seven. Yes. And with both of my kids, two thousand three with my daughter was at Coaster Con this past year. Oh. And my, my daughter's favorite ride in the park is Big Bad Wolf. And of course, everyone's second at this time. But yes. I have to say, got to ride for Bolt for the first time. I don't know how you can do any better of a replacement. I mean, nothing's going to replace Big Bad Wolf. Nope. Great. But you could not do any better. I love that ride. And Invader, to me, was the surprise of the entire con. The closing ERT, I was there with Vanessa Thomas and some other Acers. Not we stayed on that ride almost the whole night time in RT. That ride was so much fun. It's not the tallest, but golly, it was maybe my favorite ride of that entire from the time, um, From the time you uh, start going downhill, you know, after the after the lift, it's just nonstop fun yeah. the whole way. We love it. Yeah, I think it really, really came out nice. We worked with Adam House. I know Clint was talking about him earlier. And I think, uh, you know, we kind of worked together and it, it turned out we, we couldn't be happier with it. And we know you love that ride too. Just like Clint was saying, getting rid of Rocco Plane. Sometimes it's really tough to say goodbye, even for a park. It was. You know, but I mean, hats off. What what a great Thank replacement you. ride. And then adding Invader to that, and you already have the already the iconic rides that we've loved for, for decades. So just hats Thank off to you. Thank you for that. Um, you know, we tried our best to play, you know, Pay a little homage to Big Bad Wolf with the drop over the over the water, um, and we, we tried our best because we were so sad when it went. Yeah, but I call that ride a home run. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate it. Actually, that entire pocket area around New Plants, a lot of people were just kind of dog leg over and just kind of skip over that. Have you noticed uh, that there's been an increase in food and? Uh, are the other vendor stalls there since the invader came in? Like there's, there's more revenue being generated than that? I, I would say absolutely yes, because it, it gives you a reason to stay in that area. Um, and especially then, all right, now I'm going to, now I've forgotten. Is invader open for breakfast? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was the train, you know, with the train um, addition uh, for Christmas Town, Christmas Town Express. Yeah. That actually got a little confusing because you have to go, the line for the train was so long yeah. and I was 